Welcome to another episode of the Hip Hop Uncensored Podcast. I'm your brother, Oga, from Hip Hop News Uncensored. And sitting across me is my co-host. What up, what up, y'all? It's your man, Sam, and CEO of Viral Hip Hop News. You're in the building for a very special edition of the Hip Hop Uncensored Podcast. Live in the building, we got activists of Philadelphia, Mr. Jamal Johnson on the podcast. How you doing today, sir? Okay, how are you? Doing well, doing well. Thank you. Now, you hit my cousin up a couple weeks ago because you had a lot of things that you wanted to talk about that is plaguing our community that's really going on nationwide, not just in Philadelphia. I know you're very active in the city of Philadelphia because that's where you live and that's where you're from. But it's going on everywhere right now. And it's something that you highlighted doesn't be, isn't often talked about here on these platforms. Right. So we wanted to open up and give you the platform to speak on something that's plaguing our community and that's gun violence. So Mr. Johnson, the floor is yours if you want to go ahead and speak on what's going on in our, in our world. Okay, well, the first thing I'm going to do is... Uh... Uh, thank y'all too for letting me come on here about this. You know, I don't feel that this is being spoken about in the circles of the people that's uh, your generation and unfortunately the people who are killed and being killed out on our streets. And uh, I just, I mean, I, I wanted to make it an issue so that everybody can start addressing it, you know, on these platforms. I mean, it's okay to know the knowledge and the jewels and the information that we give to each other. But it doesn't mean anything if we're not saving our babies, you know, saving our women, saving our elderly that are getting shot by people that look just like us. Right. So, you know, I appreciate y'all letting me be on here for this. All right. So talk about, you know, what inspired you to get into the streets and actually start to, you know, show up at these murders that go on in Philadelphia. Talk about what inspired you and when did you start actually doing this? Well, actually, I had um, began back in 2017 mm -hmm. addressing the issue of uh Gun, uh, police brutality. Okay. You okay. Know, they, they killed a young brother named David Jones of Philly and shot him in the back. Okay. And uh, I did a, a march to DC about that to the Congressional Black Caucus. And I did, I've done that every year since. And about two or three years in, I started seeing the escalation of homicides mm -hmm. in Philly. Mm -hmm. And then I started seeing it was going on around the whole country. So on that upcoming march, I made that my focus. Right. With the police brutality issue being secondary, okay. because as y'all know, we're killing each other more than police are right now, and have been. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's kind of like how I got started, and I didn't feel there was enough action being done in my city. Right. I had joined various groups and organizations to address the issue. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't feel, and still don't feel, that enough is being done by most of them. Some of them are very strong, some of them are very active, some of them are very encouraging in the efforts that they're making but overall i think we're not doing enough to address this issue right, right. additionally uh politicians haven't done nothing mm -hmm. you know um you may or may not know that last year i did a, a, a hunger strike outside of city hall for about a month to get mayor kenny to acknowledge a gun violence resolution that was brought to him by our city council mm -hmm. he told him for six months he wasn't even gonna talk about it mm. So I sat outside the city hall, and when I wasn't there, I was sitting outside his house. And when I wasn't there, I was sitting outside his girlfriend's house. Wow. You know, and letting them realize that we're not going, I'm not going away until you address this resolution. And about a month later, he came out, and, uh, you know, we had our talk, and he made some promises that he would do certain things. And right now, only one thing that I'm aware of is really active, and that's we have a bi weekly gun violence briefing from the city. Uh, every two weeks right? about what's going on, you know what I mean? And similar to how they was doing the COVID. Right. You know, right, right. Um, I'm also, also advocating, which a lot of people don't agree. I'm advocating for the National Guard. Mm. Now, people are saying to me, why you want the National Guard on our streets? Right. Well, until I start seeing some black faces in black places, we got to put some green people out there. Mm. Somebody got to save us. And I don't think we're doing a good job at all when it comes to looking out for our communities. And that includes the revolutionaries. Mm -hmm. That includes uh, the defunders of the police. That includes uh, you name it. I don't care who they are, what they represent. They are not on these streets doing what we should be doing, not only as men, mm -hmm. but just as people to look out for our fellow human beings. How, how has gun violence evolved in our community from when you grew up to when you were a teenager, a, a young man, and now an elder? How, how, is, how has gun violence evolved in our community since you've grown up? I think it's devolved more than it's evolved. I think that we're going to a, a, a 
base of all those animalistic tendencies, mm -hmm. the way that we react, the way that um, we are not caring about people who are being shot, women, children. You know, we have so many children that have been killed in Philadelphia. Um, women that are pregnant women have been shot and killed, you know, and it's like we don't have any sanctity for life, especially black life. That's the main thing. Right. You know, we always talk about the other people, but we're killing people that look like us. And I don't understand how that in any way is an evolution to anything. You know, if anything, we're going back to probably worse than animals. Right. At least they look out for their young. We're not even doing that. Right. Well, they talk about a time, you know, in America, which I don't think I was around to time. I was born in 85, where it wasn't a lot of black on black homicide like that. Do you remember that time in Philly where it was like when it was more communal and people weren't really killing each other? Was that like the crack era when it really started to really uptick in, in killings, in your opinion? Well, in my opinion, no. Okay. And I can only speak for my lifetime. Right. You know, I grew up, I was born in the 50s. Okay. Um, I came up through the 60s. Gang war was always happening in Philly. Mm. You know, we was gang war each other more than we gang war the other people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, did we go to this extent? No, because there was an hierarchy. You know what I mean? There was those in charge. There was those underlings under them, and they all listened to the man in charge. Mm -hmm. Out here, nobody's in charge. Also, you still have respect for women and children. Yeah. You know, they were off limits. Here, they're not off limits. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, people attribute a lot of this to the crack era. That may be true. Some people attribute it to a lot of progressive policies on gun control mm -hmm. and gun and crime period mm -hmm. you know it may be some of both right the bottom line is there's no figures out there of leadership right now let me let me let me denote what i mean i don't see any bobby seals P. newtons in philadelphia i don't see any dave richardson's mm -hmm. or milton streets if you don't know those names yeah they're no. very powerful names back so, in the day right yeah. i don't see them out there with these young people mm -hmm. I see a lot of armchair activists on YouTube, on yeah. the social platforms. Yeah. I see a lot of speakers speak very eloquently. Mm -hmm. But I don't see them in the front of no groups taking people to where it's got to go. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I think that we're missing that that element of, of um, zeal and fervor for the action. We got it for the speech, mm -hmm. but we don't seem to have it for the action. Do you see? the nation of Islam or the Hebrew Israelite groups in Philly? Because I heard that they out there, you know, that type of stuff. Am I correct when I say that or? Everything I say is my own opinion. Okay. I don't speak for anybody but myself. Right. I grew up during the time of the nation. Okay. Okay. Right. Um, and the nation was strong. They were respected and they were feared. Uh, back in the day, this didn't wouldn't happen like this going on right now. Mm -hmm. The nation, first of all, wouldn't allow it right okay and secondly since everybody was belonging to the gang the guy that was in charge the runner would make sure you didn't get out of pocket anyway see so it was kind of like a line because a lot mm -hmm. of brothers that were the old or like our old heads that was in the gangs wound up in the nation right so the respect was already there Understood. um the thing is that the hebrew the, the hebrew israelites i have i personally I've never seen them or aligned myself with them in Philly. Not okay. that they may be out there. I have never crisscrossed with them one time yet wow. on the streets. Now, the nation, I've spoken to a brother uh, in Philly about this. They told me they, they do have a group that goes out in a certain area of Philly once a week. Mm -hmm. I was told they were going to be a lot more plentiful in Philly. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen that come to fruition yet. Mm -hmm. And to be frank and to be Simple about it, I'm disappointed. Now, it's true, the nation had a reputation for back then, and a lot of new people grew up, died off, or just like myself. Mm -hmm. But still, I just can't believe that we can't get a good bunch of them on the streets on a consistent basis based on their history and their reputation to try to calm the state down a little bit. Let's get to the why. Why do you feel like gun violence in our communities have taken a savage turn as you would <clears throat> as you put it why do you think this is what do, what do you think the leading cause of this issue is 
Well, you know, we got all these people, these sociologists and academia, you know, they, they keep asking that question. You know, news reporters ask it every five minutes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just speak black. Mm -hmm. To speak black about it, there ain't enough men out here doing what they should be doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's bad enough we're not in the homes raising our kids. But we watching and stepping over these kids on the street. You know, we're looking at these young men on the corners and riding right by them. Um, a few months back, a uh, Moss was shot up. Wow. And um, they got our patrol to start monitoring their mosque, but they paid them. Now, back in the day, in the 70s, when Muslims were strong in Philly, you ain't gonna have to pay nobody to do nothing because we'd have took over and made sure we didn't have that happen again. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Right. This kind of attitude, I think, is so prevalent that a lot of young people see it. Yeah. They don't see the fear. They don't see the consequences. They don't see any type of accountability for the action from the community, from the father, uncle, grandfather, whoever. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So they continue to just do this. I mean, like, let's take the drill music. Mm -hmm. Look at these young men kill each other. They get on there and talk about it. Disrespect each other. Dead. Yeah. yeah. Dead people, you know, which brings up so much emotion. But we look at it and we know these people on these things. These people have mothers and fathers. They know who their kids are. They look like they, some of them don't even wear a mask. But yet they keep repeating this music. Yet they keep being attributed to some of these homicides. And it doesn't stop until one of them gets killed or gets locked up. Right. Why is that? Mm. You know, that's just a simple thing. Right. And I can't for the life of me grasp the understanding of it from people who are their fathers or their uncles. Mm -hmm. I don't understand it. Now the police, they don't, they act like that they, they want to help, they want to do stuff. Are the police not trying to really clean up the streets in your opinion in Philadelphia? Now I'll say this. Like you said, I'm on the street or, or quite a bit. And the police and I have spoken, I've spoken to the police commissioner. Mm -hmm. And for one, and this just came out recently. We have about 6,500, 6,000 police officers in Philadelphia. Okay. Only 2,500 of them are assigned to the street. Think mm. about that. Wow. 2,500 out of 6,000. Mm. They already, I believe it is 600 short. Anyway. And that's like a million, mil, million plus people in the city, right? One, one point, I think it's 1.65. Okay. Wow. Okay. So you got sometimes four to seven police officers at a station at a time. Mm. Period. Not good. Period. Think about that. Right. Meanwhile, they just got an increase in their budget. You know? So it's these kind of dynamics that are affecting why we're not getting what I think eyes on the street from the police department. Okay? So that, in addition to the fact that the citizenry are not really getting involved in it on the street level, I mean, you can go out there and do what you want. Right. So we got so many carjackings, homicides, robberies, you know, trashing stores. Right. I mean, it's just like it's like the Wild Wild West, man. How important are politics when it comes to these kind of situations and putting policies in place? And do we have the people in place that are even running to do so? If not, what do we have to do as a people on a political level? To because we always hear we got to vote, we got to vote, we got to vote, mm -hmm. but then we don't have the right candidates in place to put in place what we need, so we're caught just voting for whoever. So, how do we get that lined up with what every with the other pieces to really stop the shit that's going on out here? Well, let me say this everything I tell you right now is not hearsay. So, I'll give you an example of something that happened. I was the person that happened to okay. politically, and this is the first time I'm putting public knowledge, but mm -hmm. it needs to be public knowledge. Okay. We got a gentleman running for a Senate, Fetterman, right? I don't know if y'all familiar with his name or not. Mm -hmm. uh, he came to Philadelphia. Uh, he's, he's doing his political stump. I'm out there with another gentleman. And we're always on the street with our posters, right? Trying to bring attention to this problem. He gets off. He looks at us. We look at him. He continues to march. Mm -hmm. Takes his photo ops. His, his people are looking at us. We're looking at them. Every once did they come over and talk to us? Now, now remember now, mm -hmm. he's a mayor that stopped crime supposedly in his city mm -hmm. for five years. Right. You're looking at gun violence advocates right here. Right. 
So we thought maybe he might drive by and holler at us. He, he, he got in his truck, went right past us. You know what I mean? Now, he's an example, mm-hmm. as far as I'm concerned, mm-hmm. as majority of the politicians, period. You know what I mean? Because I don't believe that they realize that we care as much as we do. Maybe we don't show it enough. Mm-hmm. But I do believe that if this were 445 white people dead in Philadelphia, mm. that city would be shut down. Mm. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. <coughs> so you're saying pretty much <coughs> and now you're good. And in other words, they don't really care about black death like that. Is that what you're saying? I don't want to put words in. Well, mind. I'll say this. I came up during the time of Frank Grizzle. You ever heard of him? Yeah, sir. Okay. Frank Grizzle, because city council was predominantly white. Okay. Uh, move, uh, not move, but uh, the Black Panthers was on the scene. We had some real fiery activists back in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, but Rizzo knocked heads and took names, and the cops knocked heads and took names. Stop and frisk, they talking about today, this ain't nothing but paddy wagon stuff out here. Mm-hmm. The way people think they've been disrespected out here now, mm-hmm. and they used to stick a joint up in you and they wouldn't call it and say nothing mm-hmm. and keep you moving, right? Because we didn't have that type of Enforcement of our rights, right? It's right. about the law, yeah. And Rizzo's law is what was paramount in Philadelphia back then. All of you know, at one point they took Black Panthers, lined them up outside a building, and made them strip naked in front of women and children. Mm-hmm. Never heard of that. Wow! You can find the, the, the photograph online. Okay, they want to emasculate them. Now, when we look at what's happening today. As far as I'm concerned, we 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 have to we can't keep talking about being kings and queens, you know, um, black being being the white supremacy, anything about being black and strong. We can't do that while we step over our own babies. Okay, the police are not going to solve this problem. Right. The politicians are not going to solve this problem. Mm-hmm. Now, so God is not going to solve this problem. We got to solve this problem. But it got to start with the people with the male energy, the men. And we're lacking the men. You know, and for people to even not talk about this, I mean, ad nauseum. I mean, they should be speaking about this endlessly, about what's lacking on our streets. And you don't hear it. You don't hear it from the younger, you don't hear it from the older ones. And the ones that are speaking about it aren't the ones out there making an example of proof of leadership of what they should be doing. You see what I'm saying? Right. And I think that's a big, a big thing that we need in our communities. Do you think that with this whole snitch culture that they got, do you think that people are scared now because, oh, somebody got killed. Now you're out in the streets, you know, activating somebody to be brought to justice. Now you're putting your life in danger. Do you think that plays a part in why you don't see a lot of men out there as well? Why can't we speak for myself again? Right. I make it a point to try to be at, I won't say every single homicide because I was just sick and I missed about four of them. Mm. But I try to be present at the scene of almost all homicides in Philadelphia. Mm. Okay, within 24 hours. Right. Now imagine if all black men did that in their communities where they live. Mm -hmm. A whole throng of them on the scene within 24 hours. Okay. What message would that send to the community? What message would that send to the shooters? You see what I'm saying? The snitch policy that the young people are adopting, that's their policy. They ain't our policy. Right. You see what I'm saying? We say you kill an innocent woman. You kill an innocent children. Mm-hmm. We can't have that. Right. We can't mm-hmm. have that. Mm-hmm. You don't know how to shoot. That's your problem, right. not our problem. Right. You see what I'm saying? But right now, we got too much collateral damage going on in our community. So snitching ain't got nothing to do with this. Before we started getting, before we started recording, you asked the question on why media outlets aren't bringing this issue up. Black media outlets. Black media outlets in particular, absolutely. We see hip hop artists being killed on a daily. You know what I mean? We're almost numb to the fact that human beings, not rappers, human beings are being murdered out here. But then that conversation comes around when a hip hop artist happens, but it doesn't happen the way, you know what I mean? You, you're calling it out to be. Why do you think that is? I think that unfortunately, a lot of these platforms are built on commercialization, um, fascination, and just 
idolatry for the people that they're dealing with. So let's say a, a famous person gets killed. Mm -hmm. Like you said, they talk about the killing. Then when it's gone, it's on to the next thing, yeah. right? But meanwhile, the people who used to be um, supporters of that person who's dead, basically, he has basically said, well, he's gone and I'm moving on. Right. When in reality, he should be highlighting the fact of how this guy died. Yeah. He got shot down the street. See what I'm saying? But the thing is, we have to reinforce that. Right. Just like myself. I keep asking this question. How or why should I be known amongst all the people who are working on gun violence in Philadelphia? As far as I'm concerned, nobody should stand out. Mm -hmm. Right? Because that means if somebody's standing out, then somebody else is not. Mm -hmm. Why is that? We should all be standing out against this gun violence. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's happening with the hip-hop um, media. I think their thing is, well, we're going to do ourselves. I listen to Killer Mike. Waiting for him to get on this thing tough. It ain't happening. Okay? And I can only speak for what I hear. Now, maybe he's out there doing it tough. I don't, I don't see it. Mm -hmm. And I ask around the young people about it. I'm asking, how come um, the guy, what's his name? Charlemagne? Mm -hmm. Charlemagne. Mm -hmm. You know, all these brothers from New York. All these brothers from these major cities where, where we're killing each other left and right. How come they're not making this their platform to talk about it in depth? Mm -hmm. Like they do... The politics. Yeah. Everybody's out here yelling about politics. Vote this, vote that. Vote. Well, you can't vote for somebody that's dead. <clears throat> you got all these people dying. I mean, that's our electorate. Those people could possibly be the next president. If nothing else, they're at least a voter if they're over 18. Mm -hmm. But but where where's the where's the effort being made to keep them alive? By the polit political structure and by the people who claim that they love them. Right. It doesn't make sense. Now, I like to try to go to the root cause um, of, of stuff like this. In Philly, I'm not sure. Do they have like a lot of um, after school programs, trade programs, like stuff for the kids to do in any of the schools, and mainly the public schools? That's where most of the kids go. Or is it like kind of like go home and go on the streets and do what you want to do, in your opinion? I would say this since gun violence in this country mm -hmm. has become an epidemic, because it's an epidemic in the whole country. Yeah. There has been so much money thrown at this thing. Okay. In Philadelphia alone, I think it's like a quarter billion dollars total. Wow. Remember, this did this was not on the radar right. years ago. Right, right. So now you got all this money. And what did they do? They started after school program, they started all these other programs. The problem is with a lot of these programs and a lot of money that's being put out is accountability. Mm. Right. Proof that it's working. Yeah. You see, and I bring this up often because mm -hmm. we can keep spitting out money left and right. Right. But if the numbers keep on going up, what are we accomplishing? I do not see a bang for my buck. You see what I'm saying? Now, I know there's a lot of trauma being treated out there on those streets. I know there's a lot of youth that's been given attention, attention that they probably wouldn't have been gotten before. But there's a lot of them falling through the cracks, so we wouldn't still have as many homicides as we do. What are we doing about them? And how effective are we in dealing with them? Because we must not be that effective no matter how much money you keep throwing out. I talked to Governor Wolf, that's the governor of Pennsylvania, after I went to his house and pitched the tent out city, I was wow. at his house. Okay. Okay. And he says to me, What do you want me to do? I said, I want you to get the mayor to do what he's supposed to do. Right. So he says to me, Well, you blaming me for the mayor? Yeah. <laughs> You're the governor. <laughs> get the right. guard out there. You're the man. Right. You can't get the guard out. Well, I got to wait till the mayor says he wants it. Come on, man. People are dying out here. But that's the politics of it all. What do you think the National Guard, how, how does that fix the problem? It doesn't. Okay. The National Guard will not fix gun violence. Okay. People look like you and me going to fix gun violence. Right. The National Guard, for me, is a stopgap. It stops the bleeding in the community for a while. Okay. Just like when we had the George Floyd protest. Yeah. They rob the stores. What do they do? Put the guard out there. Yeah, they ran like roaches. <laughs> it's gone. Yeah, right. Nobody got shot. Nobody got killed. We don't want them to replace the police, mm -hmm. but we need to have a force in there that's visible and commanding to let people know they ain't tolerating this mess y'all doing. Right now, we don't have that. We don't have that. The police, the police is not respected enough 
was strong enough to do it at this point right now. Wow. What's the, it, to the best of your knowledge, Mr. Johnson, what's the average age of people in our community being murdered in Philadelphia and people doing the murdering in Philadelphia? I personally, from, from, from the uh, scenes I've been on, and I hate to say it, I say like from 13 to 24. <sighs> and a lot of them are shooters. A lot of them are shooters, man. You know, the stop and frisk, you know, we don't do that, right? Mm -hmm. I understand why the councilman put it out there. I understand black people getting tired of being stopped by cops. But guess what? You can't expect not to get stopped by cops if you're the main one killing people that look just like you. What are you going to stop? White people? They're not the ones killing us. We're killing us. So, of course, they're going to stop you and check you. But now they can't do that. You know what I mean? On the level that needs to be done. Uh, driving cars around with guns in the car. Now we got a law that says you can't stop the cars anymore. Okay? Well, guess what? Now we got mass transportation of guns. You want to know why we got drive-bys? Hey, guess what? He can't pull me over anyway. You see what I'm saying? So they can't just pull you over randomly to search your car, is what you're saying? They cannot. Okay. They used to be able to pull, like, say your light bulb was out. Something like, they can't do that anymore. Wow. They can't do that anymore. Okay? So I, I, I talked to the councilman about it. I said, look, okay, I understand what you're doing. Do you have to do it now? I mean, we got people dying on the streets. Mm -hmm. Why do we got to do it now? And he gave me his history of what he's been through. Believe me, that's nothing compared to what we used to go through back in the day with Rizzo. Mm. But see, mm. they don't know it, so they can't understand it. But the bottom line is, look how many bodies we got. Mm. We got the highest number of homicides in Philadelphia history mm. last year. That includes when the mafia used to run Philly. Right. Okay, and the mafia was killing each other left and right back in the day. Mm -hmm. We killing each other more than that. And we sitting around here talking about we don't want to stop people because they might have guns that don't that aren't licensed to have a gun. We don't want to stop cars because th that's harassment. What do you call what's happening to the people? What do you call what's happening to people that are scared to come out? Don't want to let their kids play no more. Yeah. Don't want to go to the store at night. Yeah. What do you call that? That's terrorism. That's domestic terrorism. And we're doing nothing about it. What's your thoughts on guns? You know, we hear about gun violence, but what's your thoughts about a grown, responsible adult owning a firearm. I'm a Marine. I believe in guns. Yes, sir. I love my rifle when I had it. <laughs> and I love any other weapon that I have in my hand when I have it and use it. I don't like people that are irresponsible, don't know how to use them. And most of all, don't respect for what they can do. What those things can do in your hand. That's where I'm at with guns. Yes, sir. How about, how about the, uh, the gun laws? How you think they are in uh, Pennsylvania? Well, Mayor Kenny insists that he can't help the gun situation because Harrisburg won't give him more weight to um, enforce gun laws. Okay. Excuse me. Yes, sir. <clears throat> I have never met a shooter that respect the law. True. That's the, that's real. Yeah. I don't care what law you put out there from the state, the city, federal law. If somebody's going to get you, they're going to get you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I understand what they're trying to do on paper. But in our world where we live at, that don't mean nothing. They're going to get a gun if they want a gun. Wherever they got to get it from. They might pay the highest bidder. They're mm -hmm. going to get that gun. We got to get to their minds. Yeah. See, we got to deal with the shooters, not the laws. I mean, you can deal with the laws too if you want, but that can't be our paramount responsibility. And Mayor Kenny seems to make that his paramount responsibility, mm -hmm. getting these laws changed. No. Get these kids changed right because we you know you you <coughs> you live in pennsylvania we're in new jersey so when you go right across the bridge you got a different set of laws and there's still a lot of crime exactly. you know over here as well so i definitely agree um did you like lay out like a formal plan or anything that you wanted to give to like the governor or mayor that you, that you can present to the people like a step one five, had, yeah. whatever, every year i go to dc okay i take uh, well initially I took a plan that addressed police brutality. Mm -hmm. I still take that plan. Okay. But now, because of the prevalence of gun violence, mm -hmm. I go to the CBC. I'm asking them, what are y'all doing? See, we don't need to remake the wheel. Right. You don't need me, you, or anybody else to tell us how to cut this gun violence out. Right. By now, we got enough suggestions. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm getting sick and tired of all these discussions, mm -hmm. and these listening tours, and, you know, 
y'all talking too much. Right. What did you do in the two years that you were already out here getting everybody's suggestions? What did you do with all those suggestions, all those uh, solutions, as you call them? Mm-hmm. When are you going to start putting them in place? And when are we going to start seeing some uh, some results? Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. This is not rocket science. Right. You don't need me or you or anybody else to sit down with five more people and say the same thing you've been saying for the last three years. It's time to put something in place and start utilizing. The first thing I personally want is black men back on the street. Mm-hmm. We got to get black men out in our community, not behind some speaker, right. not in some auditorium, <laughs> not on some meeting, not on some festival in the street so that these young black men can see black men again. Right. You see what I'm saying? So these women can see black men, but these children can see black men. Because as long as they're not, then we're leaving them basically open to whoever and whatever wants to attack them. Good. Good. Powerful. Yeah. Good. We definitely appreciate you, Mr. Johnson. Jamal Johnson on the Hip Hop yes. Podcast. Y'all hit that like button, that five-star rating, wherever you're watching or wherever you happen to be listening on this very important topic. Mr. Johnson, right now, before we get out of here, we'll leave the floor to you, whatever you want to leave in your uh, parting remarks. Like I said, we appreciate you traveling down here and spreading your message. We always appreciate your company and your words. That's on some real was off the cameras and things like that. We appreciate you. But um, let the people know where they can find you, where they can find your platform. And like I said, the floor is yours. Well, I'd like to say, first of all, because I'm appealing to a certain audience that I know we don't talk to. I would like to say that, you know, y'all have as much responsibility as we old people do. Mm-hmm. In fact, I wish y'all would be out there instead of me so I can enjoy my retirement. That's right. right. But I can't do that thinking that possibly one of my loved ones may be killed. So I'm just hoping that my message comes across as not chastising, mm-hmm. but encouraging younger people to get involved in helping us to stop this gun violence. I mean, you see something, you got to say something. You know what I mean? It's not snitching when people are dying that have nothing to do with whatever happening out there. That's not snitching. Right. You're killing people just ridiculously. But... My, I have a Facebook page, my, my name, Jamal Johnson, SKU. SKU stands for Stop Killing Us. And you're welcome to go on there. If you're from Philly, you're welcome to come on out with me when I hit the street, because I post every time where I'm going to be, when I'm going to be there. And normally the day after the homicide, we need people on the street. When we're out there, the community responds. And it's only two or three of us mainly, normally. They respond. The women love it. The women are so glad to see black men on the corner. The children feel safe. Yeah. You see, it doesn't take money to do this thing. I get paid by nobody. I do this on my own. And I'm encouraging other people to do the same. Well, we definitely appreciate you. And anybody listening in Philly, go to his Facebook page, inbox him, DM him. Hopefully, you know, a lot of people will come and join the movement listening to this. That's my hope. Yeah, definitely. We appreciate you. Jamal Johnson on the Hip Hop and Sense yeah. of Podcast. As always, salute. Thank you. Thank you. All yeah. right. We are...